Well, hello, our Savior Lutheran Church, and for everyone gathered to join us today. I'm so excited uh, to be joining you, if not in person, online. Uh, I know that the uh, conditions for the weather um, are not quite up to snuff. Uh, I was myself stuck out uh, last night, and I, I continue to pray for anyone who was stuck out even past me. I ask that you continue to keep your the emergency personnel in your prayers, uh, that they would uh, be kept safe as they need to navigate the streets. Uh, we have a brief service prepared for you, a devotion for this Epiphany Day, and so I'll ask that you join me in a quick word of prayer. O oh God, by the leading of a star, you made known your only begotten Son to the Gentiles. Lead us who know you by faith to enjoy heaven the fullness of your divine presence through the same Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit one God now and forever amen now, of course for epiphany what we celebrate is the three wise men coming to see Jesus it's a very important section of the Christmas narrative although it does end the season of Christmas because the Magi came quite some time after Jesus arrived now, knowing that, I'd like to read uh, a portion of the text for us today. We got Matthew chapter 2, and it's going to go all the way through the 12th verse. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of King Herod the Great, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born King of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose, and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means the least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, that I too may come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way, and behold the star that they had seen when it rose before them, until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly, with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child, with Mary his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warmed in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their country by another way. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Well, government is a fun subject. It was one of my favorite subjects in school. Uh, and there is a lot to be said about the various governments out there. And what those governments say about the governing philosophy, the people, and the rulers. I remember for uh, one government class, they all had to take a citizenship test at the beginning of the class. So all Americans, they have their citizenship by birthright if they were born in this country. But to get an idea of what other people have to go through, they had us take a citizenship test. And there was only one student who could pass before the class took place. Now after the class, quite a bit more of them could pass the test. But this is very reflective of our culture. Fortunately or unfortunately, there are many people in the United States that cannot pass a citizenship test. As a matter of fact, about 60% of Nevada people would be unable to pass a citizenship test if it was administered to them. Now, it says quite a bit about what our country believes in, that we give our citizens rights, that we do this simply by virtue of them being born in our land. 
in other nations around the world, many of them, they do not have what we call birthright citizenship. And we enjoy many freedoms here in America because our government is based on the three words that begin the Constitution. You know them. Say them with me at home. We the people. Other governments, they're derived in other ways through power and threat of force. These uh, people can sometimes establish governments not through peaceful means, but other means. They rule simply because they can. You may have heard of one government that was established uh, by a strange woman lying in a pond distributing swords. There's a lot to be gained from our government. I do lo enjoy living in America and the freedoms that it gives to us. But someone pointed out to me some time ago that because we do not live in a kingdom, sometimes the concept of kings and kingdoms are lost to us. You got the kingdom of God showing up all over the New Testament. And yet sometimes we miss. What does it mean to have a king? What does it mean to have a kingdom? And so to explore this, I want to talk just a little bit about the journey of the Magi and the encounters with kings that they had. Now you'll notice who the Magi were not. The text never said that these were kings. I think there's a great deal to be gained from that uh, hymn, We Three Kings of Orient Are. But in that first line, you got at least three errors. First of all, they were not man why they were not kings they were magi now what is a magi it just sounds like short for magician or something you know we don't really know but in those days it would be a, a wide variety of professions some of those professions we would think of as the secular sciences uh, they would deal with astronomy and uh, um, uh, weather patterns other times they would deal more with what we would call the pagan world. And while they were often present when kings were anointed, established in the, their reign, they themselves were not kings. But when I said three errors, so we better explore them. First, it says of Orient, and typically we think of the Orient as of the Far East, but these men were likely from Babylonia. And finally, did you know? The text never actually says that there were three of them. It does say that there were three sorts of gifts, but it never says that there were three in their number. And as a matter of fact, if we go to the earliest traditions of the early church, what we find is that there could have been as many as 12. We don't know the exact number. We don't necessarily think that's the important thing either. So these wise men, they had heard that there had been a king born in Israel and they had come to pay homage to him. These are Gentiles from a far off land that had somehow, perhaps through the Babylonian Talmud or some other documents that they had, ascertained that there was a king born in the land of Israel. Now, what did they expect of a king? Well, the text said they, they had headed, they had headed to Jerusalem. After all, that's the capital of Israel. That's where a king should be, should it not? I mean, kings were probably born in a palace, so they went knocking on where they were told, this is where the king lives. And they said, hello, Herod, ruler of this country. We've come to find the actual king of this country. <clears throat> now, no surprise, didn't pan out the way they expected. They were looking in the wrong place. And sometimes that happens when we are looking for Jesus in our own lives, that we are looking in the wrong place. <clears throat> Jesus says, look for me over here, but in our own lives, in our own ordinary lives, Sometimes Jesus seems rather absent. 
doesn't seem like any earthly king that we have. After all, I mean, most kings, they make their power and presence known right away. They are known throughout the world. News of them reaches us. But not many had heard about Jesus. He was born in a very ordinary way, to a very ordinary family. Many of the things that Jesus endured in his life were the trials of the common folk. And we too could identify with some of those struggles. I mean, when life gets hard, it can be hard to see the kingdom. Sign up. What is the kingdom? It is wherever the reign and rule of God is established. So sometimes it's very evident to us where the kingdom is. Other times we're left scratching our heads, looking to the left, to the right. God, you say you got a kingdom for us. Where is it? It's not looking too good. I don't see your reign. I don't see your rule in my life. Now, there are other people out there. They don't see the kingdom, and they're not looking for it. They can't be bothered to look for the kingdom of God. Now, some of these people, they're not very religious at all. They can't be bothered to see what is in the New Testament. But other people, they're very religious indeed. And if we look at the text, we see that there were many religious people that these wise men had consulted, these magi had talked to, and yet none of them said, let's go with them to meet with this newborn king. Now they were satisfied with their own kingdom. They weren't looking for a new one. It says a lot about the wise men. Maybe a little bit about their lack of wisdom, that they headed to Jerusalem first, that they looked for the king in places of power, in palaces, with maybe a trumpet surrounding them. Da, 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 da. But they did find the king. They found the king because they consulted the word of God. The people told them the pro prophecy that was given 700 years prior. You, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means the least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people, Israel. And so they made their way. To Bethlehem, to a very ordinary town in the first century. Jesus often comes to us in very ordinary means. He came and he was born in a stable. He was not given the royal treatment. And he had a lot of the same struggles that we struggle with. And he also confronted suffering. This was a king that didn't exercise his authority by forcing everyone to be subject under his feet. But it was a king that ruled by dying on a cross. Because the reign and rule of God had a broader objective than most kings have today. The reign and rule of God was seen in the forgiveness of won by Jesus Christ, and that forgiveness could only be won by his sacrificial death upon the cross. Dying on the cross, he paid for the sins of the whole world. But that is not the end of the story. Three days later, Jesus rose victoriously from the dead, giving us a foretaste of the kingdom that is coming to us. But in the here and now, we find Jesus in very ordinary ways. We find him by looking for him where he may be found. 
there's a person, a little story I heard some time ago about a, a man who said, well, God is everywhere. So I don't have to go to church. I mean, come on. And he was asking his pastor about this. His pastor said, yeah, that's an interesting point. God is indeed everywhere. He is omnipresent. And so if you want to encounter him, you don't necessarily need to be in a church building. You don't necessarily need to be gathered with the saints. But let me just give you this little thought experiment. Did you know that in our atmosphere, you can find water everywhere? Even in the dry land of Nevada, you're going to get like 10% humidity. There is water everywhere. So you probably don't need a cup of water to drink. And water is everywhere. But you know that's not true. You know that if you want to gain the benefits of water, you need to look to the sources of where you can find it. And God has promised to be here for us, for our benefit in several ways. These ways are relatively ordinary. I mean, you can find God by reading a book. That's incredible. An ordinary paper book. I mean, sometimes we give it leather bindings. Sometimes we got hardcover bindings. But by reading the scriptures, we could see the promises of God that are for us. That the kingdom of God is amongst us. That Jesus is ruling and reigning by his word. Because his word is going out, even amongst our suffering, the word is going out, is being planted amongst the nations, amongst people who need to hear the promises. You might also look for the word in several other places. We'll look for him in the sacrament. Through bread and wine, we receive the body and blood of Jesus. And by receiving his body and blood, we get the forgiveness of sins. And finally, we get it by being in and amongst each other. So you say, where two or three are gathered in the name of Jesus, he is present amongst you. I'm going to wager a guess that God is not stopped by an online service and that God is with you today even in the midst of your struggles and he has promised that this is not the end just as Jesus was raised from the dead after his suffering and death there's resurrection coming for you too there's a time when you will see your friends and loved ones of old because Jesus will reign in power when he comes again. It's a really cool thing we see at the end of the story of the three wise men. And this is really why we consider them wise. Because after they found Mary with the child Jesus, they exceedingly rejoiced with great joy. So much joy everywhere. And they worshipped him. They offered little sacrifices to him, gifts in the forms of gold and frankincense. And that's not all, there's myrrh. We also bring a sacrifice to God. But that sacrifice, it, it, it's not necessarily found in gold or frankincense or myrrh. As a matter of fact, uh, none of you have ever put those things in the offering plate. In fact, what I'm talking about is something much deeper than a financial contribution. And for that, I want to go to the book of Romans, chapter 12. <coughs> As I flip over, reading just the first two verses of chapter 12, Paul writes these words, I appeal to you, brothers, therefore, in view of God's mercy, present your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, 
that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is his good and acceptable and perfect will. We offer our bodies and say, God, where do you want me to go? How can I be an agent of your kingdom? How can I be an ambassador for Jesus Christ? He gives us a very ordinary thing to do. Tell others. Tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Jesus Christ is Lord. Let us pray. God, thank you for gathering us together, even in the online format which we are using today to worship your son Jesus Christ and acknowledge the blessings that he has poured out upon our lives we ask that you would keep people safe as they need to traverse upon these roads and that you would bring healing to those who need it Lord we come to your throne of grace knowing that you are full of mercy and that every day has new morning mercies for us. So we ask, confessing our sins, that you would heal us, forgive us, and renew us. In the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. I do want to add one little thing. Pinion. Pinion. Come here. I want to show you guys. I got this nice little buddy with me. He's a good boy. The Bible says all sin and fall short of the glory of God, but he's a good boy. I was so happy that he was able to keep me company. All right. That's all I have for you guys today. God's blessings be upon you. I, I do pray that God would showcase his work amongst you, that you would be able to see the kingdom of God at work in your lives. Look forward to seeing you next Sunday. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. I presume you said, thanks be to God. Amen.